Welcome back to City Scene TV. Up next, we're going to talk about a conference that's coming up on Sunday, February 16th, that focuses on having a more nutritious diet. It's called the Whole Conference. And here with us, we have Dr. David Lowe, who is one of the organizers of that conference. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. So the acronym Whole, W-H-O-L-E, what does that stand for? It stands for the why and how of life-promoting eating. Okay. I like that. And in a nutshell, let's talk about the conference and what, what that is going to be telling us. Well, it's a conference designed to do just that, the how and the why. So we have the, a list of internationally known and nationally known speakers that come and talk about the whys, the advantages of a whole food plant-based diet. And also, then we have chefs or other people that can help people make that transition successfully. Teach us how to cook those exactly. things. Those, okay. Exactly. Or, or change their mindset on how to make that change. So as I mentioned to you, Dr. Lowe, right before the show, I went to the conference last year as a result of you telling me about it. Great. So I learned a lot. But um, for folks who are a little bit unsure about what a plant-based diet is, how can the whole conference uh, change their perspective or educate them more on that? Well, these speakers are well-versed, well-known, and, and experts in their field in, in telling people the advantages of a whole food plant-based diet. And that's, that's the purpose, and also to get them motivated, but also give them information. Information is knowledge, and yes. knowledge is power. And so that would maybe motivate them, and then we try to at least help them make the transition by teaching them a little bit about the how and how it's not that difficult. Okay. That, that gives a great overview. Um, is the event going to be held at the same venue as last year? Yes, it'll be the Rancho Campania High School oh, okay. Performing Arts Auditorium again. Okay. Yes. And ha did we throw the date out there yet or when this is happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday, February 16th. Sunday, February 16th, and it's an all-day, all, most of the afternoon event, right? Right. It'll be okay. the President's Day weekend. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the well-known speakers that will be at the event? Any of their names or uh, anyone in particular you want to mention who's on the schedule this year? Well, we are fortunate, again, to have Dr. Michael Greger as our keynote speaker. Um, okay. He was last here maybe three years ago. He didn't make it two years ago um, because he missed his plane trip oh, from, no. from Washington, D.C. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. So he is going to make it this year. He should be in California, not too far away from us before he speaks. So okay. he's not that far away if he has some difficulty. Okay. But uh, he's our keynote speaker. He has just authored a book, How Not to Diet, a okay. New York Times bestseller. I like that. And last year he authored the book, How Not to Die. Oh. And so um, those are kind of a pair of books that he, he'll be willing to autograph, and, and not only will we'll be selling them there at the conference. Nice. That sounds like one we should definitely read, Jerry. I'm thinking so. <laughs> well, Might it, have to have my husband read that one. Yeah. It, well, it is, yeah. it is a How Not to Diet Evidence-Based Weight Loss. I like that. Yeah. So it is a uh, particularly uh, great book. I'm, I'm currently reading it myself okay. right now. I think I'm going to check yeah. those out. Yeah. So you're a practicing physician, correct? Yes. And you promote this in your everyday practice. Tell us yes. about your practice. Well, I used to be in private practice of, uh, well, in a group practice of general pediatrics. And then oh. for 10 years, I went into a solo practice for teens and young adults. Oh, okay. And then a few years ago, I moved over to the youth correctional facility, the Ventura Youth Correctional Facility here in Camarillo, and get the practice at over there with the inmates there. Wonderful. So you're teaching everybody how yes. to eat properly. Yeah. So the plant-based diet, tell us how the approach to preparing the meals is different than what probably what I do every day. It's probably not that much different in an approach. It's just using different ingredients. So you choose to use whole food, plant-based, and as unprocessed a plant food as you can, okay. and you eliminate um, all animal products and, and in some cases, oil. Wow. Because you're trying to eliminate as much processed food as, as possible, whether that's processed sugar, processed fats like oils, and other processed grains like the um, enriched grains and the bleached, unbleached grains right. and all the other grains that are primarily used in the industry. Those are some big changes for some people. You know? They are, but it's just a matter of, of substituting ingredients. Okay. So once they learn that, it's and just not that difficult. And that's what you teach, and those are the things that's that you the talk things that about. we can teach, yes. 
Also at the conference, I think one thing that I picked up was kind of learning how to differentiate between processed food and not processed, because sometimes exactly. we don't even realize what right. we're eating is exactly. processed, or, or the packaging on something at the grocery store you know, could make you believe that, that you're eating yeah. a whole, you know, plant-based meal when in fact, you know, you kind of dig a little deeper and you learn more about that exactly. at the conference. We're trying to do not just vegan because that has a certain connotation to it. Um, we are trying to focus more on the whole food plant-based idea in regards to health, not just for animal welfare or the environment, right. but for a person's own health, mm -hmm. immediate and long-term. And by using whole food, plant-based ingredients, they're getting more nutrition. So what, what happens in the processing is a lot of the good things yeah. that help the body function better are eliminated. Right. So that, that is a one part that helps cause disease. And the food is delicious. It yes. is. I think, I it think is, a lot yeah. of times people feel they're going to give something up and, and maybe the enjoyment of flavor. But um, we know that's not the case. Even at, they have some uh, food prepared at the conference for guests to enjoy as well. Yes, there will be, there'll be some nice food, breakfast and lunch at the conference. Love it. Great. And we'll probably be raffling off the food that the chef demonstrates during the oh. conference as well. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> fun. You definitely want to be there for that. So, Dr. Lo, I know you brought some photos to share with us today. Um, I see we have here your, your logo. Yeah, Colorful this is our logo for the whole conference. Very nutritious of the logo, I must say. Looks healthy, I hope. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does. does. <laughs> uh, this tells you the acronym of what whole stands for. But uh, why and how of why and how of life promoting eating? Got it. Right. Okay. These are our speakers, starting with uh, Dr. Michael Greger up on the far okay. left. Dr. Sean Hashmi is a kidney specialist, uh, works for Kaiser mm -hmm. Permanente here in Southern California. Um, he'll be talking about kidney health and and, the, and diets. Dr. Angie Sedegi, she's a gastroenterologist in Newport Beach, and then um, to the Right, far right is uh, Tim Kaufman. He is a uh, man that made a dramatic transformation with his in his life, and then subsequently with his wife's life, in regards to his. He was uh, grossly overweight, and had other number of health problems. He made a dramatic change, and he's wow. going to tell his story. Oh, wonderful! And he focuses on the mindset that you need to do or have in order to make the change, like like he did. Oh, I'm sure it takes. A Totally yes, different mindset. It does. For sure. yeah. And then there's doctors, uh, a team, Shurzai, they call themselves, Dr. Dean and Aisha Shurzai. They're neurologists from Loma Linda. They'll be talking about Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Oh, okay. and, and, and that's a very, very hot topic now yes, with the rise in Alzheimer's disease and dementia in America. And he's, they're going to talk about preventing the tsunami of. Alzheimer's disease okay, and wonderful. they're really more they're they're focusing on prevention because that so far has been the only real mm -hmm. dramatic advancement in in Alzheimer's disease and dementia some great information coming up mm -hmm. and then chef Alan Redinger he is from Colorado he presented at our whole conference uh, back in I think 2015 so he's the he'll be the first chef that's come back a second time nice. to the whole conference. Must have been good. <laughs> he was a really nice guy. We enjoyed him. This is uh, some people having breakfast. We have a breakfast starting at 6.45 to 7.45 in the morning for those who can make it. And then uh, this is Dr. An uh, Brooke Goldner who talked about uh, autoimmune diseases. Uh, she was our first speaker yeah, of the full morning. Full room. Yeah. yeah, it was a big crowd. And uh, the speakers do get a chance to uh, meet the, the attendees at, at usually their tables if they're selling books or things like that. This is Chef Lisa Rice from Texas, from the Whole Foods um, Health Center in Texas, and she was our sh one of our chefs that demonstrated last year. Great. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, Dr. Lowe, can you share a little bit with us about eating a plant-based diet and how that can help you avoid chronic disease? Well, there have been a number of studies now that have helped uh, demonstrate that. There's the uh, Nurses' Health Study. There's a Harvard Health Professional Study. There's some long-term studies like the Adventist Health Studies. There's two of those studies uh, in, uh, that have been published, and one is actually the Adventist Health Study, too, is still ongoing. There's the EPIC study, which is a large study in Europe. About okay. started out about cancer, but it has expanded now to uh, almost incorporate a couple of million people in Europe. Wow. 
demonstrating the power of, of uh, lifestyle and, and a healthy diet. Okay. Uh, there's the blue zones studies that have been done. Mm -hmm. So all of those tend to kind of point Support. to the same direction for, for prim primarily having a whole food plant-based diet. So the plant-based diet, you, I, for me, I tend to think, well, how the heck am I not going to get my protein in? Mm -hmm. What's the difference, what, what the, the difference in animal protein versus plant-based protein? Well, there's quite a bit of difference. So they're, they're proteins, and proteins are made up of amino acids, little blocks, and they, when you put them together like Legos, you put these yeah, little blocks right. together and you form this protein as plant protein, and you form these little amino acids, almost using the same amino acids in a way, but different proportions. So the amino acids in animal proteins tend to be more acidic. Okay. Oh, and acid is not a real good thing mm -hmm. for the body, especially continually getting a load of that. So high acid loads on the body do create stresses on the body, on the kidneys, uh, on the bones, okay. so that can that promote, promote osteoporosis and, and calcium loss out of the bones. But besides that, there are differences in animal protein. Animal protein, as opposed to plant protein, in, independently raises your cholesterol. Even without cholesterol, it will raise your cholesterol. It will independently raise your blood sugar without any added sugar. <laughs> and then you have the, the, the problems that it, it stimulates uh, what we call insulin growth factor one. Insulin growth factor one is a very strong growth. It's like fertilizer for the body. And so it, it stimulates the growth of all kinds of cells, good and bad. And unfortunately, the bad go along with it. It's like putting fertilizer on a, on a piece of ground. You know, the weeds grow and the plants grow that you want. Right. So uh, insulin growth factor one will stimulate the growth of cancer cells. So besides there's that, so much. Yeah, there's so many differences. There's so much. Yes. There, I, I hate to break you off, but we're yeah. running out of time. Yeah. And there's so much information to learn about this. So Sunday, February 16th, go to the whole conference. Um, website is wholeconference.org. Right. Dr. Lowe, thank you so much for being with us. You're we welcome. We really appreciate it. It's always it. a pleasure.